So, okay, let's see if the Active Directory is finally installed on my server. Uh, okay, red does not look good, but it seems that it is only... Yes, don't care about such issues. IT guy will kill me, but I think finally um, there should be the possibility to extend to administer users and computers and groups and so on. So we have site services module for whatever, I don't care. Um, I just uh, care about my Spark services domain and there we have users and the possibility of using my, myself. Pay lever, we see the Spark security group. Uh, we can add here additional groups. And so you see this Active Directory stuff is working. Um, and we make another Sparks group uh, windows just to see too. Um, we can also add additional users. Um, very important is that these are Windows users. And uh, what you also see is that this is tied to a domain, so it's not a local user anymore, it's a domain user, an Active Directory user. Uh, passwords, I use always the same because I know. Uh, never expires, so hmm, bad luck. So what to configure now? Um, okay, I have to find where this user is part of. So I can say, okay, this is a member of the users, but I can also say he's a member of um, something with Sparks. Um, and now I have only this proof, both possible users. I say uh, Sonia is a part of the Sparks group window two. And I can say additionally, I want to be as Peter Lieber, not only a user, I also want to be part of administrators, whatever I am. And I also want to be part of a Sparks group. Um, Sparks group one, that's my uh, related group. Um, with an enterprise architect, so we have this active directory configuration. With an enterprise architect, um, we have the enterprise architect users, but now I can bind an enterprise architect user to um, an Active Directory account. And what you also will see that um, maybe you remember from the last session, uh, can go back to the part one. Uh, there it was automatically logging on PLIBA because because uh, there was no domain defined, but now it was not possible because PayLiver is not existing anymore as login because I have this domain configuration. And what I can do here is I can just import users and say, okay, I want to add users. And I can say, okay, I want to search for them. Um, so we have PayLiver and we have maybe also uh, Sonia, Lieber, um, this is a local user and this is a domain user. And if I add them, can you see the users? And then I can say, okay, these new users become a part of the Sparks group one. And I think it's both, it's by default both. Um, uh, why ever it says it's not allowed. So maybe because these users are already existing. So I just remove them. I import again. Find now. And so I think this should work. Very funny. 
so maybe we have some issue with my Firebird configuration here, so that I cannot import uh, this kind of users without adding a department or something like that. Interesting. Uh, okay, I tried to import only a domain user. This is working. Um, so maybe the mixture of a not domain user and domain user is not working. And what you can see here is that by default the domain is uh, reused as part of the name. So if I log on as Sonia in the Windows domain as a domain account, then it's automatically by accepting Windows identification added here. So I believe it was the mixture of non and uh, non-active directory users and active directory user that was not allowed. No, it was an issue because it's expecting uh, a domain if the domain is here. Okay, you have to decide active directory or not. That's your decision. So um, the funny story again, uh, by default, there is no password. Um, so you have to have at least a simple one, but the complexity is your duty. And uh, you, you, Sony will maybe never need a password because if single sign-on is configured and she has a Windows domain, uh, her computer is part of the Windows domain, is she's logged on as Sonia Lieber or as Sonia because this is the login, then um, she will never have to type in the password. So for the groups, it's the same. So if you want to have a new group, uh, then you have to create one and you can say, I want to link this group to uh, an existing one. And now we can search for groups and there were, were some Sparks groups we have defined. So um, it was the Sparks group one, Windows one. So just you can see the difference. Group name is at the Brasarchite group and I bind it to the Sparks group Windows one. So, so you can here see Oops, that there is a Windows Active Directory link. And we can bind this Sparks Group 2 also to the Active Directory. Check names and take the Group 2. And this is just uh, a mapping because you can now see that the groups, um, and that's, that is bound to a Windows group, you can see that um, Sonia is automatically part of Group 1 because she is part of group one and uh, so we can combine active directory um, logic and grouping uh, with uh, enterprise architect logic so that's all i wanted to show without with with the active directory part from the perspective of enterprise architect don't forget that this active directory is also the base for our internet information server so um, as showed before, um, there is also internet information server here. And uh, if you identify um, the URL security and .NET authorization, okay, this is not um, the site we have predefined, but you have the possibility here to make authentication based on Windows authentication. And if you have activated this Windows authentication, then also these Active Directory users are in place. Yeah? And additionally, you have additional security possibilities. It's not activated on this server in Western Europe, but you can um, also activate URL authorization and then you have the possibility to restrict it. So you have a combination of enterprise architect security bound to Windows Active Directory and if you use ProCloud server using Internet Information Server in the middle um, as a proxy at the end, then you have all the possibility of authorization with the Internet Information Server too. And the, first the, the third stage you can have is also the database security. But once again, I really recommend to have a separated view to the database. Never give users direct access to the database with the same credentials they have for Windows because you don't have to access except you want it, but you don't should have access to the database without the proxy of ProCloud Server if you have such scenario. 
and this makes it even very secure that there is no direct connection to the data database if you use Pro, Pro Cloud authorization with Windows authentication and authorization if you want. And uh, behind you have a trusted um, backend with a service certificate um, that is enabling this kind of security to the database. So no direct database access required if you use ProCloud Server. So short sum up, activating user security in enterprise architect is done by enable security. Of course, you can disable, you need this authorization key. This really changes the database because you get some additional attributes for having locking information and who has locked. Then you get by default an uh, administrative user. It's called admin and has the default password. Password. Um, you can have um, this user and groups. You groups can be bound to Active Directories. Depending on Active Directory configuration, you see the group users here. Uh, we have defined two: uh, one with no users and one with Sonia as user. Then you define the group permissions, uh, meaning you define the rights of the what is allowed to do with an enterprise architect. This is on feature level. And uh, of course, you can go more into detail and even import the Active Directory's here, user here. Um, and you see that because Sonia is part of uh, Sonia is part of group uh, one, and here I have to define that it's not to group two, so if I change it here, then it's changed. Um, and she is part of group one and two, and depending on the groups, uh, she has the different rights. The great ones are derived from the groups. If you set additional ones by user, then they are not great, then they are just white in the background. Um, if you want to see, Administrator has all rights, of course. Um, you can see that this is by default all rights. Uh, what is very important that you understand that accept Windows identification means that Enterprise Architect trusts you and uh, just makes a single sign on using the login name. So if it's a domain, uh, if you're using Active Directory, then you have a domain name, a slash, and the login name. If you have Windows authentication without Active Directory, it could be a simple uh, login name. And it does not care about the password you set here. So you can make a very complex one the user will never see. Um, the responsible for the complexity of the password is like in the Linux world. It's a philosophy thing. If you have the right to change the password, so of course, this is a user permission. If you have the right to change the password, you're also responsible for the complexity. And even users, especially our modelers, uh, have the right to change uh, the password in the way they think it's secure. So it's their responsibility. Um, that's a, a little bit optimistic, I think, but I think it's, uh, it's fair enough. Uh, last but not least, um, the users here uh, are only for enterprise architect authentication and so meaning enterprise architect application web ea so the front end is also using this user rights if you activate them but for authentication through windows then use pro cloud server using the internet information server possibilities and uh, that means that's a much better um, ensurance that the Windows locked on user is really that domain user and there's no trick around it because the handshake between within Windows is uh, higher secured and therefore it's really reliable and trustful if you use Enterprise Architect with ProCloud Server, Enterprise Architect security enabled and Active Directory security enabled too. So thank you very much. This was a sample based uh, and uh, play, played around in Western Europe. I have already prepared some stuff that is running in Brazil, some stuff that's running in India. So um, be happy to see the next session, I hope. Thank you. Bye.